Well, good morning. Good morning. Or whenever you are watching. True. Welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is David Diaz. This is Pastor Isaac. We Hi are all. from the Joshua Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Joshua, Texas. North Texas coming at you. We are here to discuss the adult Sabbath school uh, lesson from the Seventh-day Adventist Church, prepared by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, this quarter, uh, last quarter was fascinating. Absolutely, Isaiah, Isaiah yes. This quarter, just the title, I mean, the promise, God's everlasting covenant. Right. Um, we know we're going to get into some really neat stuff on this. It really makes me wonder uh, how this is going to impact our day, our, our day life, you know, today. Yeah. Because we know, yeah, he made promises to people that lived thousands of years ago, but what does that have to do with yeah. us today? So today, yes. I'm excited. Um, it, very interesting. The quarterly, I always like to flip it on the back because mm -hmm. in the Seventh Day Adventist Church, we are mm -hmm. uh, we are a world church, yes, global. Uh, and this uh, this year, every quarter, we we um, gather or we take in a special offering okay. for projects. Uh, that we have all around the world right. and we're divided into divisions. This is the inter-American divisions Which goes from Mexico to northern South America all the way okay. to Central America That covers uh, quite a bit of uh, quite, quite a bit, a bit of, of territories mm -hmm. and and they're further subdivided just to keep us organized, but All these I was looking at these projects. they all have to do with education Mm. Uh, Boy, that's valuable. Schools, universities. Mm. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot. Thirteen universities or, or schools will be impacted. Uh, and with you this say quarter's lesson. that can be found on the back of every quarter. On the back of every quarter, okay. there's a map. Right. It's very interesting right. to look at. Very informative because it mm. also gives the number of churches, okay. the number of or, or the membership we have in each country mm. uh, compared to the population uh, in each country. Wow. Uh, very, very fascinating. Uh, oh, it does cover the Caribbean also. There's like okay. one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, if we count Trinidad and, Trib and Tobago, mm. Caribbean islands that are being affected. All right. So this, this excellent. Um, is going to be an excellent quarter. Uh, the the Well, let's pray and then we'll go into the... Okay, the, fair enough. Um, kind of the introduction, introduction to the... Okay, yeah. perfect. Uh, would you pray for us? Sure, actually? absolutely. Yeah. Dear Father in Heaven, Lord, we thank you so much that David and I can get together right now and that we can study this lesson that will take us into your Word. Father, as we dive into your Word, the Bible, please open our minds and shine the light on the things that you would like us to see and impress upon our hearts and minds the truths that you would have us to know as we talk and study together. And Lord, not just us here this morning, but uh, those who watch this video and study with us whenever they do. Please do the same for them, Lord. We thank you for being willing always to do this for us as we study your word. And in your name we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Forgot to mention that what's that? You can get this. That's right. A, a, a hard copy of the quarterly, mm -hmm. either Texas uh, Adventist Book Center. Mm -hmm. Uh, or stop by any Adventist church and um, they will have a copy I bet they'd you. be willing to, to give Absolutely. one to you. Oh, yeah. And sit in on one of the discussions if, sure. you, if you can. That would sure. be incredible. And that would be uh, Saturdays at uh, 10.30 you, usually? No, you, no. Usually 9.30. 9.30, that's right. Okay. 10 o'clock, we I get about a half hour, 45 minutes of good mm -hmm. discussion. Okay. Um, at least that's that's the schedule here. And, and they is. may have <laughs> several schedules wherever. Just Google it. <laughs> that's how they Google it. True. Um, and then, of course, the apps. I, I, this yes. quarter, I switched apps, and, and we'll see how that works for us. Okay. It looks a lot more like the quarterly, the, the, All right. the app that I'm right. using now. Excellent. Okay, the Covenant, um, and the primary uh, uh, contributor is a gentleman by the name of Dr. Gerhard Hassel. Hassel. Mm -hmm. And you knew him personally. I did. He was a professor of mine up at seminary. Uh, the first year I was there, I think may have been his last year, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. At uh, Andrews University. He was, for 27 years, served as the director of the Doctor of Theology uh, PhD program, 81 to 88, as the dean of the seminary also. Okay, so maybe he wasn't there in official capacity. Yeah, he may have been, yeah, like mm. a... Okay. Um, um, I forget that. Yeah, term. I don't know the term. <laughs> that it's, it escaped me the moment we started talking about it. Wow. Okay, uh, uh, a couple of quotes in here. We're talking about the covenant, and that's very important. Mm -hmm. The covenant, and, and he's talking about 
Well, well, we can assume, I think. What is a covenant first? Exactly. Covenant okay. uh, can be described, I think, as a promise. Okay. All right. uh, a contract, mm. an agreement, huh. a promise. All right. Uh, I think all of those can apply. Fair enough. Um, we, we, I, I always like to think that we make a covenant to God when we get married at the front. Oh. We promise to each other, love, sure. honor, uh, love honor and obey. Denise didn't so. say obey, but it's understood. <laughs> <laughs> but sure it is. It's understood. Sure it is. But our covenant for that marriage mm -hmm. was to each other, but it was as much to God hmm. also. Almost like a triangle. Almost. There's a third party in that marriage. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and a very important part. Sure. Because I think that's, that's what has made it work. Uh, as, certainly as long as it has, but despite uh, Denise yes. and myself. Yes. Um, despite uh, our humanity. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So w when we couldn't hold on to each other, he held on to both of us. Mm. And that's the way I like, that's the picture I like to, to have in my head. You know, someone too, and the reason I brought up the word triangle is as we draw closer to God, we yeah. invariably get closer to each other. Yes. If, if he yes. is the, the top center point yes. of that. So I, I like that picture as well. Yes. And, and we'll probably touch on that picture because I have another analogy is the closer we get to God, the closer we get to Satan's target. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not all um, roses. No, no, <laughs> it's not. Roses as, in as fact, it were. we're promised trouble yes. in this world. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but a couple quotes from this is right. uh, uh, from the starting, uh, well, the second page of the of the um, introduction. God's covenant is motivated by love. His love for the fallen race, a love mm -hmm. that led him to the cross. Well, that's the ultimate love right there. Absolutely. At the cross. Yeah. Um, and not just because it was a death, but because it was such a horrible, horrific death. And completely undeserved. I mean, he absolutely, completely, innocent. completely undeserved. Yeah. Guiltless, yeah. innocent, mm -hmm. spotless, right. as it were. Right. Um, the next paradigm. Mm -hmm. How does it all work? Is It is as simple as an exchange. Christ takes our sins and gives us his righteousness so that through him we are accounted as righteous as God himself. Hmm. That's incredible, David. That's kind of lopsided, um, that experience. It's it extremely <laughs> lopsided, and it's, it's simply incredible. Because we are definitely the benefactors on this. Uh, absolutely. It's a win-win, yes. this covenant yes. for, for us. It's a win-win for us. Mm. Um, uh, the next paragraph, one of the uh, sentences. Through Jesus, murderers, adulterers, adulterers, bigots, liars, thieves, and even the incestuous can enter into a relationship with God because Jesus' blood brings not only forgiveness, but also cleansing, healing, and restoration. Hmm. Restoration. Um, man, that is a win-win. <laughs> I, I, I got to think, he goes through a list here, or they go through a list, and this is actually the second time they mentioned that specific list. I imagine we'll touch on it this okay. quarter. All right. Uh, but those are some pretty horrific... Um, yes, they are. Not just sins, but crimes even. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's a difference. And there's a difference, I think. All right. So let's go into lesson one. Hmm. So... Never mind. I was going to go into a little bit of, of a philosoph philosophical Philosopha. question. Okay. Uh, if all 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 sins are, are crimes, all. but are all crimes sins? I wouldn't think so. Right. You know, and, and, and depends and, on whether it's a crime against God or a crime against is dishonoring man. your mother and father a crime in the United States and Texas? No. But it is a sin. That's true. Yeah. So I think I think it's backwards actually the way you said it. Maybe okay. I'll, maybe I was thinking about it backwards. Uh, uh, well, no, I don't. No, I guess it's that is really, <laughs> really not that way either. We'll, we'll, All right. We'll probably figure. <laughs> <laughs> or text or uh, you know comment in the sure, comment sure. section. Sure. Comment. What's please. the difference between a crime and a sin? <clears throat> We've kind of. Uh, yeah, tangled our way into that. Yeah, I think maybe we should just start right into Saturday. So what happened? It, it's funny, a, a friend of ours, she's a, a principal. Hmm. And, you know, when you talk to kids, and, and we, I guess, commiserate with my experiences and, and her experiences, but we have this thing, like we ask each other questions mm -hmm. similar to this, what happened? And 
we start off with an explanation like the kids sometimes happen. Hmm. So what happened was, <laughs> and we know that there's going to be a story to <laughs> sure. follow. Sure, absolutely. It was all set on the, I mean, on the rails. But what happened was this mm -hmm. led to this, led to this, led to this, and now here I am in the principal's office. <laughs> yes, almost, almost bordering the territory of justification. Yes. Well, what happened? You know, trying I mean, to sure, anyway. Trying to justify. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we might get to that also. Um, in even either, here. either maybe either in this lesson or in the next lesson. Okay. Which, All right. The table of contents today is what happened tomorrow. A covenant primer. All future generations. An everlasting covenant. That's just um, most of April right there. It looks like April has five Sabbaths. Children of the promise uh, is the fifth Sabbath. <clears throat> All right. The memory right. text. Then God said. Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. That's Genesis 1, 26 and 27 from the New Revised Standard Version. Oh, okay. Um, and, and we have other versions. Yeah, I was trying to follow along. The, yeah. what, what were you reading no, no, from? That's, okay, that's that was directly from, from the, the lesson. Yeah, All right. from the quarterly. Sure. Um, and, and it's interesting because, it, it, of course, I, I, I assume it's a more modern translation. I don't, I'm not too familiar I don't with believe it. so. Mm -hmm. Because they use the word humankind instead of mankind. Right. Yep. Uh, a little bit more contemporary. Now, some people would say mankind is, a, is a, uh, almost a sexist term. You speak, oh, it's, it's man. Not at all. The word there is just like like uh, the New Revised Standard Version said, it's humanity. humanity. Humankind, yes. Yeah. So that's what uh, mankind stands for. Yes. All right. Um, so if we sometimes say that word, mankind. Yes. It's not it's, meant. In no, the not way at all. At all. Okay. Not at all. So mm -hmm. the, the the introduction, the biblical account of the of the creation of humanity is filled with hope, happiness, and perfection. Each day of creation ended with the divine pronouncement that it was good. Certainly, that didn't include typhoons, earthquakes, mm -hmm. famine, and disease, diseases. What happened? So what happened exactly? Next paragraph. The sixth day of creation ended with the divine pronouncement that it was very good. Mm. That is because that day the Lord created beings in his own image, humans, something he had not done with anything else in the Genesis account. Mm. Of course, these beings were perfect in every way. They'd have to be, after all, they were made in the image of God. Thus, of sheer necessity, they did not include murderers, thieves, liars, swindlers, and the vile in their ranks. What happened? <laughs> this week's lesson looks at, us, at the creation, at what God had first made, and then at what happened to that perfect, perfect creation. Finally, it touches on the quarter's theme, what God is doing mm -hmm. to make things right again. Yeah. That's... That's such an important question, though. What happened? You know, and, and I, I we've referred to this before, that <clears throat> the first three chapters is, <clears throat> is us falling away. Mankind, yes. humankind, Turning falling away, away yeah. from God. And the rest of the book is about yes. trying to get back. God finding a way to bring us back to himself. Yes. Is, it, is it fair to say that there's as much discussion about the first three chapters as the rest of the book, the rest of the collection? I don't know. I'm not sure how I would rate that, how I would weigh that uh, against each other. It, well, let me ask it this way. Okay. Is it, is it as important to understand? Oh, oh absolutely. As, as yes. the rest of it? Yes, because the first three chapters, again, and we've, we've talked about this before, it tells us what our origin is. Mm -hmm. And knowing our origin, yes. where did we come from? It's so important as, as humanity, and as, as a person. That is quickly becoming one of my mm -hmm. prominent, if not favorite themes is, is God as creator yes. um, yeah. in, throughout the Bible. In almost everything mm -hmm. that, that I see nowadays, mm -hmm. there's a, almost a pronouncement, a, 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 almost a verbal announcement, God ah. is creator. Um, wow. Mm -hmm. Turtles all the way down. There's a humorous story right there. Okay. Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the oh. heaven and the earth. <laughs> sure. And we all know that verse, Genesis 1-1, right? Absolutely. Um, it's one of the most famous verses, right next to John three sixteen. Oh, why? Why do you think that verse is so important? 
uh, again, it goes back to origin. So the, we were not, and not just us, but the universe was not just a cosmic accident. Uh, some result of some giant bang that accidentally yeah, happened yeah. and oh, here now there's planets. and yeah. yeah, I don't mean to make fun of that, but this is no accident. No. And to no, me, I that's what makes it being so important. It is interesting you mentioned John 3.16 when we talked about that in mm -hmm. the past few weeks about... We did. Um, yeah. How it starts. For God to love the world. Yeah, you brought that out. I'd never seen that before. And and, and I hadn't seen it before that week okay. either. Um, but again, seeing God as creator has made me look at things uh, so much differently. Uh, even that yeah. verse, which we almost take for granted. Sure. I think for, immediately of humankind. Yeah. I don't necessarily think of the rest of creation. Creation. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah. that's how actually it starts. It doesn't say anything about beings. Hmm. It says the heaven and the earth. That's true. And I, I don't know why. I, I guess here in New King James Version, it says create the heavens, plural, and the earth. And uh, it's, a, it's a plural word uh, because no matter which, which translation you look at, um, well, except for New Revised. Is, is this New Revised Standard? I, I assume it is, the New okay. Revised Standard. The ones we're using, New American Standard, New Living, and Message, all use a plural version of, of heaven, heavens. And... I, I vaguely remember as a boy that a discussion on that, mm -hmm. that there's the sky, there's space, and then there's heaven where God's throne is. Mm. And so that maybe that's the plural for heavens. Okay. I mean, as good as explanation as any. I can. Yes. Um, the, okay. Funny, funny story. A scientist <laughs> had just learned... Uh, lectured, sorry, on the orbits of the planets around the sun and the orbit of the sun around the center of the galaxy. When an elderly woman in black tennis shoes rose and said that the Earth was a flat disk sitting on the back of her turtle. The scientist, jesting, asked what the turtle was, what the turtle sat on, and she responded that it sat on another turtle. Ma'am, the scientist continued joking, then what does that turtle sit on? She answered, she answered, another turtle but before he could ask what that turtle sat on she wagged her finger in his face and snapped save your breath sonny it's turtles all the way down i don't i've, I've heard <clears throat> there's so many mm, creation stories i guess there are out there that's yes there are um and to me it's interesting because there's the truth mm -hmm. And then there are variations of that truth. And I think they're meant to distract. Oh, oh absolutely meant to distract. Uh, I mean, we just had this old woman <laughs> believe that, but people actually believe that the earth is flat. That yes. it's flat, that, that, that it was carried on a turtle even. Uh, it's carried on a turtle, yeah. yes. Um, but there's, yeah, there's a, even, there's a growing movement now that uh, the, the earth is flat, and which is uh, surprising to me. <clears throat> um, but that, that reminds me of, of something um, when I talk to children about, about God. Mm -hmm. And I say, you know, God always was. And, they'll say, and immediately they'll say, well, what about before? Uh -huh. I'm like, well, that's the thing. There isn't a before. There isn't before. Well, what happened before then? Like, mm -hmm. there wasn't a before. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, for her to say, well, it's turtles all the way down. You know, well, eventually, no, no, it's just turtles all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. I, but, I mean, it, it is... I think it's also innate within us. There's this curiosity within us sure. where we have to investigate our origins. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes where we came from will tell us where we are, but especially it'll tell us where we're going. Absolutely. Especially <laughs> with an origin that states we have purpose. Wow. You know, if, there's, if our origin is just uh, vaguely accidental, what purpose is there? Yeah. Uh, just be the best person you can be. What purpose is yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Until you die. Until you die, and that's it. <laughs> and yes. that's it. Mm -hmm. But that, and that's what the next uh, uh, What's that? paragraph, sorry, uh, refers to. However cute that story deals mm -hmm. with the most crucial yes. issue of human existence, the nature of the universe itself. What is the world that we find ourselves in by no choice of our own? Mm -hmm. What is this world? Why are we here? How did we get here? And where are we finally going? Um, that, uh, I guess, and I'm not sure how to, how to characterize the question, mm. 
is there life after death? Or what happens when we die? Okay, what happens when we die, yeah. Um, but well, that, is, that is definitely a question that a lot of people... Sure, absolutely. That's the uh, answers. Uh, you know, there are some statements out there that some people make that they have had... Uh, I, I used to think of these near-death experiences as, oh, they're all bogus. I actually believe they're very real. However, mm -hmm. <laughs> it is still a near-death experience. It's not death. It's not death, yeah. yes. So you get close, but, but you come back. And I, I've never heard of, um, I was telling a high school student about what had happened to me, and she called it an NDE. What, it, it's oh, a near-death experience. Oh, a short, shorthand. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, and it, to me, I've always explained it as dreaming or the hallucinations of a oxygen-deprived, drug-addled brain. Hmm. I mean, we dream weird things anyway. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, we do. <laughs> and imagine a brain that has no oxygen, and mm. or that's starving for oxygen, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the doctors are adding so many drugs into their. There's some real whoppers I could tell back from then, but <laughs> I don't like to tell all of them because some of them, not fun. Um, okay, let's get into the word. Right. Uh, Genesis it says to look up these texts. How does sure. each one, in its own way, answer some of the questions like? Uh, why are we here? How did we get here? Where are we finally going? Um, uh, what is one good point that they all have in common? So the first one, Genesis 1-1. We've read that. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Psalm 100, so? verse 3. Yeah, all right. So, uh, New Living, acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Wow. All right. Uh, a little bit of imagery there. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Yeah, that one to read as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He's creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired out. He doesn't pause to catch his breath. And he knows everything inside and out. That was from the message. Yeah. Um, but, boy, that, that really speaks to the magnitude of, uh, <laughs> of well, you know, again, scratching the surface of the magnitude of God. Um, have you ever built something complicated? I have. I have. Even even as a boy, a, a, a model, sure, model car, sure, lots of little pieces, little, little tiny pieces, mm -hmm. and hopefully you don't lose any of them. <laughs> yes. But the when you get so intricate into there and, mm -hmm. and placing, or I've seen people build ships in a bottle. Yes, That's tiny crazy. little tweezers. They'll reach yeah, in there and set in pieces. Mm -hmm. um, but. You know, every single little piece that goes right. in there, because you put it in there. Right. And this is, I, I, this is how I picture God. Not that we're a model or anything, um, but he knows, like it says here, uh, all the, the inside, he knows everything inside mm -hmm. and out. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's not just as far as human beings are concerned, no. and because of these questions that oh, we're trying to creation. answer. Well, I'm just saying it's not our organs. Hmm. that we're talking about inside and out. It's also our emotions, our thoughts, ah, okay. our, All right. our, our feelings that, that okay. we have. Hmm. Um, maybe our attitudes towards things. He understands those things. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, those aren't accidental. He designed that into us. It's interesting, and this just hmm. came to my mind, where Jesus says um, to love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and so here is God making us in his image. Okay. He, he knows us and he loves us. He knows us like he knows himself because we're made in his image. Absolutely. Yes. And that's, that's, man, that's a whole nother discussion, but, <laughs> but that is an, an interesting thing for me that, um, well, I think it just, it just speaks to the extent of what God knows. Which we'll never understand, I don't think. No, no, not the full, not the full comprehension of it. Uh, if, if we did, um, we we would be God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if we understood everything God understood, and I think that's the very nature of being a created being rather than a creator. That there's a vast gulf between the two as far as uh, understanding and and knowledge, and and that's okay. Yeah, I'm a creature. That's yeah. all right. You know, yeah. I'm not a creator. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> Let me go to Acts 17, 26. I'm going to read the New King James. Sure. And he is made from one, I think he means one man, uh, blood, well, from one blood, mm -hmm. every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. 
and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings. Um, so, this is, to me, this is what I call the God's carefully crafted plan. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, can you imagine managing and directing? He's like a director of a play, not that he's in, we're scripted <laughs> no, or anything. I, I hear what you're saying. Though. But the guy that knows everything, every move, every facial expression yeah. uh, that the actors are supposed to make, every and, line that they're supposed to speak. And isn't just, and I, I, this fascinates me because as I think about time, mm -hmm. uh, he's not just guessing, he's not just, um, he doesn't know all the possibilities. That's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. God knows exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to him. It's as if it has already happened. Yes. Even though it hasn't for us. Yes. So yes, it's it, that, that mind boggling. When you get into time, that mm -hmm. time conversation. Yes. Wow. That yeah. because that's how we understand things. Um, but we're just human. We're just human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ephesians uh, three verse nine. All right. Sure. I'm going to uh, new living. I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. Hmm. That's a little bit of intrigue there. Yes, it is. Um, let's read Hebrews uh, 1, 2, and then verse 10, and then we'll come back and, and discuss them all. Okay, all right. <clears throat> and I'll New Living again. Mm -hmm. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his Son. God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance, and through the Son He created the universe. He also says to the Son, In the beginning, Lord, You laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with Your hands. Okay. Hmm. This keeps going back and forth to me as far as, uh, so who did what? And the answer is yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. Uh -huh. um, the the first thing, uh, the the first verse in Ephesians talks about a mystery or a mis mysterious plan. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think all that's about? Well, what's what's the mystery about it? Yeah, see that that's my question yeah. because I I would almost say this is the mysterious plan of redemption. Mm -hmm. Okay, but. And, and see, and there, I, there again, I question because God laid this plan out for Adam and Eve in the very beginning when he, when he gave them that promise, uh, you know, your descendants will, will crush his heel, but your descendants will crush his head. Um, and they were told a deliverer would be born. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, there were still mysteries to it. Yes, we didn't understand exactly what was going to happen at the time. I think they, they thought it might be in their generation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it hasn't yeah, happened yeah. yet. Um, so there are still mysterious aspects to it, and we don't understand the, the complete picture. And maybe that's, that's the mystery. I, I, I got to think, because hmm. we're talking about God and time and what He understands, and there's no way that our three-pound brains are ever going <laughs> to... No. You know, understand all of that. Not the complete picture. Um, and so if, if we were, were to understand the complete picture, mm. it would almost literally blow our brains. I think <laughs> blow, so. blow our minds as far as... We, we just can't grasp it. We, we're not capable of... So that's yeah, the mystery. I think that's it. We're not capable of grasping that entire picture of it. Uh, that doesn't mean that, that uh, as Paul, they, he was chosen to explain to everyone. This Does that mean that... Paul understood it completely mm -hmm. himself? No. Well, of course not. But it does mean that God gifted him with light and how to how to explain to others this mysterious plan. So. It, it's interesting. Well, the, the, the Paul, mm -hmm. and one of the mysteries, we touched on it also in last quarter, one mm -hmm. of the mysteries is why. Why is God mm -hmm. doing all this? And we can say love. Mm -hmm. Now define love. <laughs> now... Um, even try to put it in boundaries or try to give it direction. Paul, above anyone else, and he, he, it's he who refers to him himself as chief of sinners. He does. Because, man, he, in his early life, he tried everything to, to extinguish that light. In fact, it describes him as breathing murderous threats. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty serious. Mm-hmm. And he became he became the person who wrote most of the New Testament. Yes, um, most of, that to say, we learn 
uh, a lot about God through mm. Paul's writings. Um, and and through his life, through through his life, life through yes. the example of what he was into into yeah. what he became, yeah. and how he lived. Yeah. Um, Hebrews, the Hebrews verse also hmm. talking about creation there. Okay, okay, yeah, absolutely good. We're there. Mm-hmm. Um, it says uh, he has spoken to us through his son. Is that capital S son? So Absolutely. You think that's God? Uh, yes. God promised sure. everything to the son as an inheritance, and through the son, he created the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, so, when we say God created the heavens and the earth, and, and really here, that's that's a point that because God said, well, who was he speaking to? Mm-hmm. He was speaking to his son. He was speaking maybe to all the rest of creation. Well. And it's very important to remember that uh, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, our, our language doesn't fully, um, doesn't say, if we were to translate that directly, it would say, in the beginning, gods created the heaven and the earth. Because it's plural. Okay. It's uh, um, Elohim. Okay. And so okay. that is the plural form of God. Yeah. And so there's, there's a clear, there's more than just one there. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and, and we see that. Then God spoke. And of course, we put that together with John that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then immediately following that, we see the Spirit of God hovering over the oh, face yeah. of the deep. So we see all three persons of the Godhead right there in the first, in, few, verses, in the first few verses of creation. Yes. Um, and then verse 10 really gets kind of weird because he yeah. also says to the Son, mm-hmm. um, it's curious. and this is from, the, from uh, New Living, um, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. This is God mm-hmm. referring to someone else as Lord. Yes. Um, now, I, I, at first I, it was a real head scratcher, but what do lords call each other? I would imagine Lord. Lord, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. it's, so yeah. it's a title. Um, mm-hmm. it, okay. You laid the foundations of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. Yeah. So this is God, Jesus as creator? Yes, yeah. Which isn't, I mean, perhaps, and it's not a new concept. Mm-hmm. Uh, other places, I, I believe uh, I believe it's also in the book of John, in the beginning, um, it says, through, through him, all things were created. Through mm-hmm. him, yeah. speaking of Jesus, yeah. all things were created. Which is, sounds very similar to what Paul is saying here in Hebrews. Um, when God says to the Son, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations. I think often of, of architects who make hmm. or who design big skyscrapers, mm-hmm. but they say, "Yeah, I built that." Oh, sure, that. sure. They didn't actually. They didn't drive in every nail build it, or anything. No, say, huh? um, and they had others to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, one of those things that I guess we we won't fully understand. It's a mystery. At least not on this earth. <laughs> it's a mystery. Uh, but the question mm-hmm. was really interesting. How does each each one in its own way answer some of the above questions? And what one point that they what is one point that they all have in common? Well, certainly at least one point is they they uh, unequivocally name God as the Creator. Mm-hmm. That is where everything began was with Him. And that's that's an interesting point because mm-hmm. they don't make any bones about it. No, God's God's the one. Right. It, it's not a guess or there's a hint. It's not a theory. It's probably. Mm-mm. It's not a myth. In fact, the way they state it, it's, uh, it's simply, that's not even um, the main aspect of what they're trying to say. This is, as an aside, God was the creator and, yeah. you know, so, yeah. this other thing. Um, so, turtles mm. all the way down. Um, <laughs> and I was going to look at homework for Sunday. Okay. But from that Sunday question, but we'll get back to that. All right. Sounds good. Um, in the image of the maker. Now, this is really interesting. Yes, it is. And, and, and I know you've touched on it before as well. Um, let's see, Genesis 1, verse 27. Oh, that's back up here. Um, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Mm-hmm. And when we say man in here, we, we're talking about it, that human Again, eye. Rice goes back to, yes, uh, humanity. Mm-hmm. Um, what does it mean that God created us in his own image? In what ways are we in his own image? Let me, let me turn back to that too. I'd like to read that one more time. Okay. Uh, because 
I really feel it's important that they, they, uh, they use this. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. Okay. And then I'm going to read from the New Living. Okay. Uh, just, just verse 26. Then God said, let us, again, mm -hmm. so there's plural, mm -hmm. and it's, of course it's plural, the, the form of God. Mm -hmm. Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Now, same, same passage from the New Living. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. And one more thing, just from the message. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature. Uh -huh. And I love seeing that difference you know, that, they, that they have in there. Because why would they say in our image, um, in our likeness? Unless those are two separate things. Right. Okay. All so, right. so we're not talking about just the physical appearance. I don't think so. No, no, no. But no. we are talking physical appearance. We That's are. One. We are. Uh, and some people might say, what? So we look like, well, that appears to be what the, what the Bible is saying. Yes. <laughs> well, um, it's, it's interesting. The, um, uh, just a quick story. Hmm. My uh, my parents and part of this will be in Spanish, but I will translate. Okay. That um, whenever, uh, as husbands will do, I think you and I both understand. Sometimes we do some. I'm just going to say boneheaded things. Yes, yes, we do. And, <laughs> yes, we do. And my mom, <laughs> whenever my dad would do something like that, hmm. um, and then one of the children would do something boneheaded. Mm -hmm. She would say, hijo de gato, gatito, which means, well, what do you expect? If you're the child of a cat is going to be a little cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so saying be, to be just like him. Sure, sure. And, and sure enough, I mean, I'm six feet tall. My dad was five foot two, but mm -hmm. I was just like him mm -hmm. um, in our characters uh, as far as that. As a matter of fact, the physical, I, I, I've said this before, that there. That's that's my dad's finger right there. When I look at it, I think of my dad's wow. okay. pointing finger. All right. Um, so it, this is what God is is talking about then, as far as not just the physical appearance, but God's character. God's yes. it's yes. in the message. I like the way it said that reflecting God's nature. Yes, reflecting, reflecting our nature. nature. Right. Okay. Now that's another interesting thing that I just thought. If he's talking about us. Does God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they each have different natures? That question just came to me. <laughs> I, I don't think so. Okay. I think they share the same nature, and yet they're still distinct. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure how that works. Again, you know, we're trying to grasp the infinite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but reflecting our nature, though, that... And I would say, well, of course, because he calls us his children. We are his... Always, the child is like the parent in in many ways. Even even among human families, we say uh, the chip off the old block. Maybe you yeah. heard that, okay? Yeah. But the the child is like the the parent, and we're called children of God. Yeah. I mean, He created us for His yeah. children. Yeah. So sure, yeah. reflecting His nature as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question two. All right. According to the Genesis account, did the Lord make anything else in His own image, other than humankind? If not. What does that tell us about our unique status in contrast to the rest of earthly creation? What lessons can we draw from this contrast? Um, That's thrilling to me, right, right there. Um, do you ever look at your son and see yourself? Yes. Or any of your sons and see yourself? I see my son and, and I see myself as far as it's... Um, Sometimes surreal. It's a real feeling because it's pride. It's um, sometimes frustration. Sometimes frustration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes a little bit of sorrow, not because of what they did or what they're doing or who they are, but because of, but and what I have passed down to them. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I don't think God does it because He made His creations perfect. He did. Um, and it's it's. I don't want to say pride but certainly he was pleased oh absolutely because he said it was good and very good yes and very good right after that yes yeah. mm -hmm. um so what does that tell us about our unique status in contrast to the rest of earthly creation you know right there and it's it almost sounds uh prideful maybe to say mm -hmm. this but it to me it speaks to the value of humanity 
Wow. He chose to make humanity in his own image. Yes, he breathed the breath of life into everything that he created, but he made us in his own image. Um, a masterpiece of creation? Absolutely a yeah, masterpiece. In fact, crowning the um, pièce de résistance. In fact, Paul even uses that word yeah. masterpiece. Wow. You know, it's incredible. What else can be found in the account of the creation of humankind that sets the race apart from anything else the Lord has created? And that one refers us to Genesis 2, verse 7, and then 18 through 25. Um, verse 7, the New Living. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the life of... He, he breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Did God do that to all the other creatures? You know, there's there's some indication that uh, he did not. No, there, there's no other time where it says okay. he breathed the breath of life into okay. their nostrils, but uh, gave them the breath of life. I don't uh -huh. know. I, I would have to go back and look at that, David. Okay, okay. Uh, I'd have to read that, that, that very just, carefully. That just came up also. Okay. okay, verse 18. Then the Lord God said, It's not good. For man to be alone i will make a helper who is just right for him so the lord god formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky he brought them to the man to see what he would call them and the man chose a name for each one he gave names to all the livestock all the birds of the sky all the wild animals but still there was no helper just right for him you want to take it from there 21 sure so the lord god caused the man to fall into a deep sleep while the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, This one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. Now, before we go uh, any further, I want to really I, I want to read verse seven one more time. Okay. From from the uh, the message. Okay. Because this really clarifies something that I think is very very important. Okay. Um, it says God formed man out of dirt from the ground, and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. The man came alive, a living soul. So. So sometimes we, we think of soul yeah. as something that is ephemeral, that uh, that leaves upon death and moves around, maybe goes to heaven, or you know, mm -hmm. obviously not in the Adventist Church doctrine. Um, but this right here tells us what constitutes a living soul. There are two ingredients: there's dirt and breath of life. Breath of life. And so when we breathe our last, that breath of life exits. Well, our bodies turn back to dirt. Yeah, you know, uh, and so. The soul doesn't actually go anywhere. It just ceases to be a soul anymore. Yeah. Without those two ingredients mixed together, there is no soul. And so it's not as though the soul is going somewhere. The soul. So yes, do I believe in a soul? Absolutely. We are the soul. Yeah. But when my breath goes, the soul stops being a soul. So, so it doesn't say God gave man it a soul. It does not say that. It, it says man became. Breathed, yeah, yeah. And right. Breathe, breathe breathe the dirt, breath of life. Breath of life. A soul. Living soul. A living soul. So you take one away, and the soul doesn't go anywhere. It just ceases yeah. to exist. Yeah. Important to understand. Yes, it I is. Agree. Uh, a lot to uh, unpack on this also. All right. Um, there was no one to be with Adam as his yes. pair, as his... And he saw pair. that in all of... He saw pairs in, in all of the rest of creation. And this is... He must have. Yeah, because Adam... You mean you're talking about Adam? Because Adam, God yeah. brought all the animals to him. Yes. And Adam lion, and lioness. Yeah, name the animals. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a male cat, a female cat. Right. Uh, a male dog, female dog, male elephant, female elephant. Yeah. Man. And those elephants were, uh, not elephants, <laughs> those animals were designed to make more animals. Yes. And Adam was a pretty smart guy, I would imagine. Yeah. And he well, said, well, yeah. so how do I do, you know? <laughs> what is, what's... How's that going to work? Uh -huh. exactly? Yeah. Okay, so uh, caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, I imagine, from naming all those animals. <laughs> um, and the Lord took Let's one see. of his ribs, and that's very important also, the significance of a rib. Hmm. Didn't take a hair from his head. Right. Or one of his toenails. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> he took a rib, hmm. um, signifying equality. Uh, uh, at least, mm, uh, well, you help me out. In what aspect that equality? A ranking, I guess. Ah, oh, 
You know, I, I, I hesitate to say a rank or, or to, you know, equality really is, is an excellent descriptive. Um, well, uh, the verse 24, Okay. Uh, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united as one. So basically, okay. like two sides of the same coin. Each okay. one may be serving a different purpose or having different roles, mm -hmm. but they're still and one. And they're designed from the very beginning to be together. To be together. So I like this. He didn't, he didn't create Eve, the woman, from uh, dirt and then breathe the breath of life into her mm -hmm. and say, okay, now we've got two separate beings. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just do your best. Get, mm -hmm. get married. No, no, no. They came from one flesh. And he says, now they're supposed to join together and become one flesh again. Yeah. So maybe there's some of that in there too. Uh, you know, they, I, I, I have know. a Facebook friend, who, uh, his childhood friend actually, mm. he refers to his wife as a side rib. Mm. And I thought that's, that's really interesting. A but, spare rib. <laughs> yeah, but his, <laughs> okay. uh, the, not, not <clears throat> from the head, so the woman's not meant to you know, drive the man's thought, mm -hmm. but certainly not from his foot. Uh, she's not to be meant, she's not meant to not be to trampled be. upon. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see, verse 25 to me is so, because mm. it says they felt no shame, but apparently they were capable of feeling shame. They were both naked, it says, Yes. but they felt no shame. You I know, that'll come into play in the next chapter for sure. It, it will, and and maybe maybe we shouldn't discuss it too deep okay. there, but but it names them as being naked, yes, mm -hmm. but feeling no shame. We think in terms of naked as um, not having any clothes on, right? Right. So, and that's and that's a very basic level yeah, of yeah. if someone says I'm naked, that means oh they don't have any clothes on. Uh, I really believe this goes a lot deeper because suddenly when they discover they are naked, they they run and hide, but they knew they were naked already. So I believe it, it goes into an aspect of um, being completely uncovered before God. And they didn't feel any shame because they had no reason to feel any shame. They, they, they were completely anything, uncovered yeah. before God and they had no reason to be shamed there about it. There was nothing to hide. Then. Nothing to hide. Yeah. And suddenly when there was something to hide, that's when the nakedness, okay. being completely open before God, now they had something to hide and of course shame. Okay. God and humankind together. All right. Uh, Genesis 1, 28 and 29, um, on page 4. Um, ah, uh, verse 2, I'm going to read from the uh, New American Standard. All right. Uh, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over everything that moves on the earth. Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the earth, sorry, that is on the surface of all the earth, and every tree uh, which has fruit yielding seed, it shall be a food for you. Mm -hmm. uh, the first part, mm -hmm. what does it mean to rule over, the, over everything? Fill the earth and subdue it. Okay. Um... That's, that I, sounds I'm, almost military. It does it? sound very military. I'm going to read from New Living because I okay. really like the wording. Okay. It says, uh, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Ah. Reign over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and all the animals that scurry. You know, a governor doesn't necessarily own anything, but he's, um, he's uh, he or she is placed in charge of uh, as... Um, Oh, what's, what's the word that we use? Steward. Steward, yes, is, is the steward of. Yeah. So absolutely, yes, he is to oversee, but he doesn't own it. He right. just oversees right. it's the... His. It's not his, doesn't belong to But him. he looks over it as if it was As his. if it was, yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And, and it brings me back to that radio commercial we hear mm. all the time. Well, not maybe not all the time, but um, it, it's, it's a man talking to God. Mm. He says, God, I, I love you. What can I do for you? And God says, well, let me have your wallet. And oh, you want my wallet? Well, okay, I don't know what you'll do with my wallet, but there it is. Um, I want your house, I want your car, uh, I want your job, hmm. I, I want your family. And then God turns around and says, here, take care of all of this for me, hmm. to that same man. 
Um, and that to me was, it's a beautiful picture. I mean, it was that's meant to be. That strikes kind of, me yeah. exa almost exactly the same. And that's, yeah, that's what God has done mm -hmm. here. It's, 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 so it's not to subdue them, but it is to take care of them. Absolutely, yes. Um, because even a conquering king, what's he going to do with all that land once he conquers it? Sure. Um, He's got to have yeah. people yeah. taking care of it. Hmm. Um, and go ahead. No, I just wanted to draw attention to the to the first part. Uh, you know, we we skip. We say, yeah, oh, be fill the earth, be fruit. Listen, this was this was Friday, uh -huh. apparently, and God is speaking to them now. Uh, to be blunt, He's saying, enjoy each other. Yeah, have some kids. Yeah, um, and you know how that happens. Yeah. <laughs> so absolutely, yeah. Uh, this, this was blessed of God. This type of this this action was blessed of God. And and even our conversation is is um, an example of what has become of that word. Sex. Sure. Absolutely. Sex. Yeah. Uh, Denise and I sometimes we go to uh, make presentations to young people, youth, mm -hmm. uh, about sexuality, mm -hmm. about uh, those changes that, that are inevitable as, sure. as you grow. Sure. And the first thing we do is we have the students repeat after us. We say sex. Mm -hmm. We say uh, the, the, the genitalia. Mm -hmm. we, we give them names because they're not bad words. No, they're not. No. Sin has made them and twisted it. Twisted it, yes. Yeah. Changed, yeah. In, Changed into, the way we think about it. Into something that it was not mm -hmm. meant to be. In so fact, there's a phrase that drives me nuts when I hear people say it. It's not used so much anymore. But it, it used to be uh, when I was a kid when someone would said, "Oh, they they do the dirty." No, yeah. Yeah. I don't. What? <laughs> no, it's, it's not, not dirty. dirty at all. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, mm -hmm. and then it says, um, "Interesting that they had us read verse twenty-nine. Mm -hmm. I've given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit of the trees for your food. Um, uh, were there any vegetables in here?" Denise says. Vegetables were a result of sin because they're not mentioned in Genesis. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> and she doesn't like her vegetables too well. Well, she eats them because we have to. And sometimes we get don't, crazy. Don't vegetables things. bear seeds too? I don't know. Um, I think you plant the whole vegetable. Really? Don't don't, don't hold me that. But I know fruit has seeds. Yeah. 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 That's true. Don't think about lettuce. Don't you don't you plant lettuce seeds? I, I think we did. Maybe so. Yeah, because if, if, if you let it flower and go to seed, then, then you get the seeds. So you know? why do we refer to them as something different? Vegetables and fruits. I don't know. <laughs> Must be in their makeup. They don't have Maybe. much sugar in them. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe so. Um, but that becomes important later on also. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, first yeah, of all, it doesn't, it doesn't say brisket. Say, no, it doesn't yeah. say brisket. It doesn't, it doesn't say, brisket. say uh, no. veal. No. It mm -hmm. doesn't say uh, rack of lamb. Nope. No, it does not. Um, so there, there's a very clear, Pork. yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. None of that. There's a very clear uh, picture of what they were to eat. Basically, vegetarians. Mm -hmm. is what we're talking Absolutely about. Absolutely, even vegan vegetarians. Sure. Um, in here, because it was all not raw. Even mm -hmm. uh, they didn't cook it. I wonder if there was anything like fire around that, because they, they didn't need to be warmed. Yeah. What was, was what was the need? Right. Yeah, it was all perfect. Hmm. Um, let's see. Tell us about how God used the material world. Do they imply that there is something bad in material things and our enjoyment of them? I don't think so. No. What lessons can we learn from these early scenes of human history about how, should we, how we should relate to creation itself? Um, it's a lot of times, um, and, and I've heard it say this, animals adapt to their environment. Man adapts their environment to, to them. <laughs> as know. often as possible, yes. Yeah. I believe that is true. Um, so we often um, take the, the stance, I say we, humankind. Mm. Humankind, sure. Uh, that the Earth's resources are ours and they're meant to serve us. I think that's where we mistranslate that statement that God gave Adam and Eve yes. to... Uh, Subdue. Subdue, yeah. yes. And, and we take that in to mean, oh, this is ours to do with as we please. Mm -hmm. And it's just not the case. Yes. This is God's that he is putting us in charge of to have stewardship over, yeah. to take care of it as if it were ours. But it's not. Okay. Hmm. Um, and we're getting on in time. But okay. We really All need right. to get to the next chapter. At the tree. 
Okay, uh-huh. this is where we start to answer that question. What happened? Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So what happened was, okay, <laughs> Genesis 2, 16 and 17, uh, New King James Version. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Man, that's a that's death sentence there. Seems awfully strict, doesn't yeah. it? Eat a fruit and die. But yeah. here's the thing. It's not the only tree in the garden. No, it's not. It's, it's just one tree out of a garden full of trees. Oh, yeah. Everything on, yeah. It's, it's Anything everything on you can ask yeah. for. Mm-hmm. Um, but that one tree, except for that one tree, mm. it wasn't necessarily about the it, fruit wasn't poison. No. Not at all. Um, as a matter wasn't fact, magical. Wasn't no. So that wasn't the actual test. No. No. What was the test? Then? Do I believe God or not? Yeah, that's it. Do I believe God? Is, is God true to His word? Yeah. yeah. Huh? Hmm. It says this test provided Adam and Eve with an opportunity to exercise mm. their free mm-hmm. will. They had a choice. Absolutely. In fact, that's the only way love could be freely returned. Is To choose. To choose. Mm -hmm. Um, It also challenged them to respond positively or negatively Mm -hmm. to their relationship with the Creator. It also shows that God had made them free moral beings. After all, if they did not have the opportunity to disobey, when we ask, why did God put the tree there anyway? If they didn't have the opportunity to disobey, why would the Lord have even bothered warning them in the first place against disobedience? Exactly. And this is, this is, I think, has to do with what we've referred to before as the cosmic conflict. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That uh, Satan is accusing God, and that's what Satan means, the mm-hmm. accuser, yes. accusing God of being unjust. Now, Satan wasn't always Satan, though. No, right? he was Lucifer at one time. So, Lucifer means a light, light bringer, light, light, bearer. light bearer. Uh, that means he, had, he was a free moral agent, too. Yeah, so, apparently angels have free will as well. So everything God creates, wow, a free moral agent. Yeah, it, it has to be. It's his character um, demands it because he yeah. is love. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, Top, uh, go ahead. No, I, I just wanted to get back to to where we were. I didn't mean to interrupt and, uh-huh. and go ahead. stop you there. Uh, okay. I didn't have anything to say, I guess. Okay. I, guess I guess you finished okay, that. Okay, going, going down, by halfway down the page. Right. By calling Adam and Eve to obey his will, God was saying, I am your creator, and I have made you in my image. Your life is sustained by me, for by me you live and move and have your being. I have provided all things for your well-being and happiness, sustenance, home, human companionship, and have established you as the ruler of the world under me. You know what? And that answers the question from before the question why are we here hmm. why is the earth here where are we going what are we supposed what's our purpose yeah if you are willing to affirm this relationship with me because you love me then i will be your god and you will be my children and that to me and i've said that also hmm. is the covenant i will be your god says mm-hmm. he and, and you will be, be my his people. children yeah uh, and you can affirm this relationship and trust and the trust implicit in it by simply obeying this specific command. And it was just one command. And really, don't eat from the tree. I think command also is a poor translation. Sure. Or it has taken sure. on a meaning uh, because uh, it's like a, a sergeant barking orders. We think orders. of a, a dictator issuing yeah, yeah. commands that have to be followed. And you're right. No, that it, doesn't mean But that. It's, it's more... Um, giving them direction or giving them even mm-hmm. a warning. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, um, not a warning. That, you, yeah, you God know, didn't will, just say, I will strike you down. Don't no. eat from this tree. No. He said, this is what will happen if you yeah. do. You'll die. So watch out. He didn't say, I'll kill you. He didn't no. say that. No, no. He just said, you will die if mm. you eat from it. And that's it. Hmm. Uh, in the end, our relationship with God can be effective and lasting only if we freely choose to accept His will. In essence, rejecting His will is to claim independence from Him. It indicates that we believe we do not need Him. This is a choice that results in the knowledge of evil, and evil leads to alienation, loneliness, frustration, and death. How crazy is that for a creature to think, 
that he does not need the creator. <laughs> you know, um, outside of God, there is nothing. Um, nothing. I have to think when we build fences to keep dogs in, they mm -hmm. see it as a challenge. <laughs> And, and no, we want to keep them safe. We safe. want to yeah. make sure they have food and water and shelter. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that they have love. Um, but it's in their nature to try and escape because they don't see it as a protection. They see it as an enclosure. A, yes, a boundary that limits their freedom. And, and maybe that's mm -hmm. what, what we lose sight of as far as um, God's command, God's warning, God's love. Mm -hmm. for us will actually keep us safe will keep us living forever in fact it's a command meant to uh, and again maybe the word command is, is the mm -hmm. wrong word it's a, it's a, it's a I'll say command anyway it's a command meant to increase our ability for happiness our capacity for joy and happiness because yeah. God knows exactly what we'll need to be the most joyful the most happy the most amazing people we can be and he says this is what it is so rather than a boundary that limits our freedom, it, it increases our capacity for mm. joy, for freedom, yes, for, yes. for love. Yes. So, so this is the way to, to be human, this right? Is the way to be the <laughs> exactly. perfect human that I created you exactly. to be. All right, breaking the relationship. So this is the one. Uh, you want to? Uh, we're in Genesis three one through six. You want All to right. One of those? Genesis. Here we go. Genesis three one through six. So again, what happened? Yeah. This is it. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Now, I'm gonna to have to provide just a little bit of commentary here. Uh, he asks a very stupid question. And I believe he does that on purpose. Mm -hmm. Because this is, again, this is, this is Satan that we're dealing with, who is created above humans. He's smarter than human. Their angels are smarter than we are. Well, hmm? not to say that Adam and Eve were any slouches. In they the weren't angel. slouches. They but were angels perfect. were yeah. still yeah. smarter. And he asks a very stupid question. And so Eve says, of course we can eat from the fruit from the trees in the garden. Maybe Eve is even thinking, let me school this dumb animal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let me tell it what, it's, what it really is. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. This is what God said. You must not eat it or touch it. If you do, you'll die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. And the woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful, its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. And then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. Wow. You know what? And I think this one There's actually... There's more to this story. Yes. I, and I want, actually want to go one verse f further. When, okay. I, when I read that, I didn't realize we had stopped just there. Because then it says in verse 7, hmm. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, okay. and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Hmm. They were trying to hide stuff. But, but isn't that interesting? They were naked before. Yeah. And, and they walked with God in the cool of the evening. Excuse me. Uh, but suddenly they feel shame over the fact that they are completely open to God. Yeah. And it's all because of this lie that they've chosen to believe. And, and that's, that's the thing, because they say Adam made a choice. It, Eve was deceived. Deceived, right. Um, we like to blame Eve, right? Oh, Adam, was she? No, no, no. Uh, Eve <laughs> Adam chose. chose. Yeah. yeah. Adam chose. And because it, it, the reason I said that is because... It says, that then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, then, it was after Adam right. chose, then the eyes of both of them were open. Um, yeah, this is, this is really crazy. The serpent, um, you think he knows this book? Backwards and forwards. Chapter and verse, backwards absolutely. and forwards. Mm -hmm. um, and he will absolutely use this book yes. in the way it was not yes. meant to be. Absolutely. So many of us... Um, uh, have heard, have experienced this this book instead of being um, God's holy word has been uh, uh, this, <laughs> a sledgehammer. A sledgehammer, yes, yeah. beaten over the head. With yeah, it. beating over the head. Unfortunately. Um, because 
Saint knows chapter and verse. So it behooves us to also know yes, it does. chapter and verse and get into this book and, yeah. and find all those wonderful promises, stories, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, songs, poems, um, the, everything that God has, the message especially that yeah. God has for us. I believe that. Um, let's see. Uh, in the midst of this tra- tragedy, now I'll go to verse uh, Genesis 3.15. Okay. Uh, and we haven't skipped anything because we'll get to verse 9 here at the end. Perfect. Um, in the midst of this tra- tragedy, what words of hope and promise did God speak? Genesis 3.15. That was the promise. Yeah. You know, I'm going to read this from the New, New King James. Okay. Um, because uh, th- there's a word here that many people say, what, is that? what does that word even mean? Mm-hmm. I will put enmity between you and the woman. And enmity is sometimes translated as, as hatred, but I think, I think it's uh, more um, accurately translated as a strong dislike and an innate sense that this is wrong. That, mm-hmm. Whatever that is, that's wrong. So God says, I will put this between you, and he's speaking to the serpent right now, uh-huh. Satan, uh-huh. Yeah. of course, between you and the woman, between your seed, the, ser- the sa- Satan's uh, descendants, and her seed, the woman's descendants. He shall bruise your... So the woman's descendants, and is now it's not just descendants, it's not seeds, it's, not it's he, he, you know, singular, shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So Satan knew from the very beginning all he was going to get was the heel. Hmm. And his head was going to be crushed. Wow. Knew from the very beginning. Hmm. Um, yeah, because we're not talking about just the snake. No, no, and, no, we're not. And one of Eve's no, this children. Is, people say, "Oh, I don't like snakes because you know yeah. Genesis." No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Uh, but he's talking actually to Lucifer. Yes, he is uh, here, or to Satan. To Satan, right? At, at this mm-hmm. point, so how does this provide hope? Oh man, um, for me, I look at this, and, and immediately after this happens. God says, I got a plan. He didn't let them stew in their uh, guilt and agony over what had taken place. He says, I, I got a plan. Here mm-hmm. it is. Let me lay it out for you. And he does. Mm-hmm. He lays it out for them. Admittedly, it's, you know, not all the details are there. No. But the plan is there. That, that's part of the, the yeah. mystery, I think. But we read before as far as God knew, knows all the ins and outs. He understands mm-hmm. what's going to happen already. Sure. And, and we, uh, we learned um, um, last quarter that because he understands everything, he had this plan even from before, yeah. ready for when this does happen. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just blew both our minds when we understood that. That was incredible. Um, so make uh, the New American Standard says, I will make mm-hmm. enemies of you and the woman. Mm-hmm. Um, you and the woman, in this case, um, the woman also takes on a different symbolic meaning. It does. Um, it, it means um, the church. Yes, in prophecy of a woman. In fact, in the book of uh, Revelation, mm-hmm. it is explained as such. The angel explains what the woman stands for. Stands for a church. A church. Yes. Um, and uh, now, let, let's let's define the word church for for our okay, listeners. Okay. We're not speaking about a building with windows and a door that goes in and out. We're not even speaking necessarily just the Seventh Day Adventist. Oh, church. absolutely oh. not. We're speaking of a body of believers. Uh, in Jesus Christ, yes, followers of Jesus, as so basic as it gets. The enemies of you and the woman, the woman, the, the church, the followers of Jesus, mm-hmm. and Satan, yes, and, um, and his followers. And so that uh, when you talk about enemies, you're talking about uh, usually you talk about war. War, absolutely. Uh, two factions that strongly dislike each other, mm-hmm. and really, Satan is the aggressor in, in that. Yeah. He's coming after our destruction. Yes, he is. Our demise, our death, which he brought death to he did. humankind. He did, and he knows that death is his, um, that, that's his end. He mm-hmm. knows that. So apparently he's just trying to bring down as many as possible with him. Um, then something very beautiful mm-hmm. in Genesis 3 verse 9 where God says to mm-hmm. Adam and Eve, where are you? And you've spoken about this yes. before. Yeah. God, of course, knew where they were. His words, instead of being filled with condemnation, were to draw guilt-ridden humankind back to him. In short, God's first words to fallen humanity came with the hope of his grace and mercy. Even now, in what ways do we find God seeking to call us 
to his mercy and grace. Um, I think of mothers who never stop praying for their wayward children. Years and years and years. And, and tears and, yeah. and, and, and um, doing whatever it takes mm-hmm. to bring their children back into the fold, mm-hmm. into God's fold. Um, there's so many ways. This, yeah, this has been so incredible. This verse right here, where are you? To me, it reads, I love you. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam, Eve, I love you. He didn't say first, <laughs> what did you do now? <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 He, he does. He does he get to that. He didn't say get out first, no, but his first words. Yeah. Where, where are you? Yeah. He, yes, he knew. And, and you, you may mention about mm-hmm. this. It's not just, where are you physically? It's where are you yeah. spiritually? Yeah. Where are you in your relationship with, with right. me, says God? In other words, why are you, why are you afraid? And he does yeah. ask that too. Yeah. Why, why are you afraid? Yeah. Where are you? Yes. All tied very closely together. Yeah. Then Adam goes into what happened was <laughs> exactly. the woman that you gave me. <laughs> I love that. Oh, my word. And we've been doing it ever since, David. Yes. Uh, so what happened? Well, it's their fault. Yeah. Yeah. The devil made me do it. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, This is going to be, I think, a fascinating. Let me see if there's any notes that I have on Fridays. It's just a short paragraph. Okay. Oh, I like this too. Um, There was a gospel sermon, I think, in those three divine words as they penetrated the dense parts of the thicket and reached the tingling ears of the fugitive. Where art thou? Thy God is not willing to lose thee. He has come forth to seek thee. And just as by and by he means to come forth in the person of his son, not only to seek, but to save that which is now lost. Hmm. That's Charles Spurgeon. Yeah. Um, beautiful. Beautiful. It, it, it's interesting. I learned, I don't know where I read it, hmm. the fig leaves that they sew together, mm-hmm. um, fig leaves are actually irritating to the skin. Yeah, they're quite itchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So why would they choose? <laughs> I don't know. You know what? I don't know. It, it, it's it's. I think it goes back to, um, or 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 it, it hints at trying to punish ourselves or trying mm. us trying to do something to make uh, it all to right. Earn. Yeah. You say, well, I'm just gonna got to power through. I got to do this yeah. to myself. Yeah, like oh, well. um, penance almost. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. When when in actuality we can do nothing. <laughs> no. No. And, the real actuality is we don't have to do anything. And that's that's the beauty. That's the mystery and the beauty, I think. And God doesn't say you have to work this hard, yeah. then we can talk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. no, ever. Yeah. yeah. All right, so what was your... It was it Back on, on Sunday. um, Sundays. Sundays, yeah. okay. Nevertheless, even if God has asked us to believe in Him as Creator, He does not ask us to believe without giving us good reason to believe, mm-hmm. realizing that there is a certain amount of faith required in almost anything we believe. So here's the homework. Write down reasons why it makes sense to have faith that we are here because a creator purposely put us here, as opposed to our origins being rooted in nothing but pure chance. Well, I certainly have got some words for that. Yeah. yeah. That's so this is excellent, excellent homework. I, that's an excellent question, yeah. I, I believe, and goes right to the root of God as creator. Yeah. And why? 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 Why is it important to have faith in that versus faith in oh, yeah. an accident? Yeah. Hmm. Um, really, right. Sunday's part also as as you answer this because, while wow, these are these are some important questions for humankind, hmm. uh, at least we deem them important. Why are we here? Well, and it speaks to the idea of faith. There, there's a there's a paragraph mm-hmm. right above that in Sunday's mm-hmm. lesson that speaks to the idea of faith. Uh, essentially, we have to have faith no matter what we believe. Mm-hmm. Whether we believe it was a cosmic accident mm-hmm. or whether God opened his mouth and purposely created us yes. in his image. So faith is involved. Yes. Uh, none of us were there. Nope. None of us were there. No. No. Um, all, all right. right. Well, let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Thank you, David. <laughs> God, our Father, we thank you for a wonderful discussion on, Father, the first three chapters. Mm-hmm. Father, we know that the first three chapters lead to the rest of the book. Um, We know there was also, Father, we understand partly that um, even before those three chapters, you had a plan um, to continue to love us, to to keep reaching out for us, Father, and to ask that question, where are you? 
Father, uh, we ask that you be with us. Forgive us our sins, Father. Bless us and keep us close to you always. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to studying with you again next week. Absolutely. May God bless you. God bless.